How's it going guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today we're in a battle versus Ultimo D from the Discord server in the overused tier. Let me know who you think is going to win based on the team you see on screen right now. And with that being said, let's jump straight into the battle. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Ultimo D. So they're going to lead off with Incineroar, which is a pretty good lead. As um, we lead off with our Araquanid. So it's a great lead for us because we have the Liquidation and they have got the Intimidate, which is unfortunate for Araquanid. But I noticed on their team... They don't have a single hazard clearer, so I'm going to go for the sticky web straight away. Get them up. They're going to be really useful for Magmortar. We, they go for a fake out to break the potential sash, which we definitely have. Um, but that's fine. We go for a sticky webs again. We'll try again. Why not? It's bringing a VGC Incineroar to this game. So they go for a will o wisp which isn't going to work on Water Bubble, which obviously they didn't know. Which is fair enough because a Raccoon is not really a very common Pokemon. So if you don't know about a Raccoon, it basically it's got an ability called Water Bubble, which, which increases the, the boost modifier for uh, Water type moves to times 2 instead of times 1.5 from Stab. And it also prevents you from getting burned. A lot of people don't realize that it prevents you from getting burned. I didn't until the last battle. So uh, now what we're going to do is, um, if we see we know they're probably going to go for a parting shot or something along those lines. I'm just going to whack in the face with a Liquidation because that makes most sense to me. They do go for the parting shot, which is absolutely fine by me. Parting shot comes through, which is great. And we now can go for... Well, we can go for Liquidation on whatever they bring in, which I'm assuming will be either the Rillaboom or the Pelipper. Probably the Pelipper. In comes the Pelipper, as expected. It's definitely going to be able to take a Liquidation at minus two, that's for sure. Even with the Rain Boost, it's not going to... It's not going to... You know, it's not going to do much damage. So, and um, that's fine. So, what I'm going to do now is I want to get rid of that Pelipper. We did get the Defense Drop, but that doesn't really matter now. I'm assuming they're going to go for a Hurricane, which I think we can live. So I'm going to go for that Miracote play right here now. They do go for the Hurricane, which we should live. Unless the Specs. We do live it, which is amazing. We do get Confused, though, which could be crucial here. If we can't break through Confusion right now, we don't break through Confusion and we nearly go down, which is really unfortunate. Because if I'd have got that Miracote off, the Pelipper would be dead. So that is really unfortunate for me. Um, so what can we do now? That's the real question. I'm leaning towards going into Torkoal, get rid of that rain. Um, but I think I'm going to go for a liquidation real quick. So they do go for another hurricane. They take us out. Araquanid goes down, which is absolutely fine. So critical hit. <laughs> Insult to injury right there. <laughs> takes us down without free HP and it's a crit as well. Great. So what do we do now? I'm leaning towards the Magmortar for the T-Bolts. I think that's a good play. So I'm leaning towards that. I think I will go into that. Now I know I know Magmortar outspeeds Pelipper, that's for sure. So we should be able to just go straight for a T-Bolt, and that should definitely take them out. And um, whether they stay in or not is another question. But I'm gonna go for it anyway, just because Pelipper's a threat. There we go. They do stay in. Thunderbolt comes through, Pelipper goes down. Absolutely amazing. So that's great. So that's taken care of. And now we just have once we get the torque hole and the rain's gone. But the rain doesn't really affect much of their team anyway. If anything, it just lowers the power of the super effective damage from fire type moves on the Rillaboom. So in comes Porygon 2. Porygon 2 is a very good switch here. It pretty much walls Magmortar to the end of the earth. They are gonna get caught in the sticky webs, and I'm wondering whether the trace or download. The download, which they're gonna get an attack boost, which is great. That means they won't have to worry about any stupidly powerful tri attacks. Um, so what do we do here? I'm leaning towards Torkoal, so I'm going to go into Torkoal. I think Torkoal's fine because they more than likely go for a Thunder Wave here. So we withdraw Magmortar like so. We're going to go into Torkoal, get the Sun up, which is going to be really beneficial to our team. And then we can go for a Body Press, which should be fine. Or we can get the Stealth Rocks up. I think I'll go with the Stealth Rocks play, to be honest with you. Um, they go for a Terra Blast, which isn't going to do much damage, I hope. No, if they got if they got that Special Attack Boost from Download... Would have done a bit more. But we go for the Stealth Rocks now just to get them up on the field. Because they're going to be really useful for that Incineroar. So they go for another Terra Blast which isn't going to do too much damage. It won't KO us. It does KO us. That was a min-max roll right there. We got a minimum roll on the first turn and a maximum roll on the next one. That is so unfortunate. So. Now what? I'm leaning towards Magmortar. I want to see how much damage it does with Fire Blast. That's what I want. Because other than that it's not really doing much for us. It can take on the Magmortar and that's about it. Um, so we'll go for a Fire Blast. We did get the Stealth Rocks up at least, which is always nice. So they withdraw Porygon 2. They don't want to get slammed in the face with a Sun Boosted Fire Blast from a Choice Specs Magmortar. And they're going to go into Incineroar. Now, we didn't get Stealth Rocks up. Ignore what I said a minute ago. Because obviously, Torkoal came in, took the hit, and then couldn't go for uh, another hit the next turn. So let's see how much this damage does. That's a good amount of damage on an Incineroar, to be fair. That's a very good amount of damage. So we don't have really a switch in because Torkoal is gone. Um, so I'm leaning, I'm, I'm thinking about what to do here, and I'm leaning towards the, uh, Roaring Moon, to be honest with you. So I think I will go Roaring Moon, because they're more than likely going to go for a knockoff, um, or a fake out. 
So Fake Out will do the minimum amount of damage. Knock Off won't hurt us too much, but it will get rid of our Choice Band. Um, getting rid of the Choice Band is probably going to be helpful here because we do get the Protosynthesis in our speed, which is great and all. Um, and they go for a Fake Out. So the Fake Out is better because we get to keep our Choice Band now. So what I'm going to do is I could go for an Outrage because it'll hurt everything on the team except for the Magna Zone. Or I can go for a U-Turn. I'm leaning towards a U-turn. That's what I'm going to do. So U-turn comes through. They don't switch out. We get some nice chip damage off. It's not stab. So it's not going to do too much damage. And it's not the most powerful move in the world. Um, so now, if we assume they're going to go for a Will-O-Wisp, we should go back into Magmortar. Um, then we can go straight for another Sun Boosted Fire Blast and take this thing out. That's going to be the game plan. So let's go into Magmortar. They do go for the Will-O-Wisp, which is going to fail. Purely because we're a fire type. You can't burn fire types, as we know. Let's go for a Fire Blast real quick. This should two-shot the Dragapult if they switch the Dragapult in. So Fire Blast comes through. Cleanly takes out the Incineroar. Fire Blast coming through is great. So Magmortar's actually putting in the work this game, which is crazy good for me. Um, because now they have to go into Dragapult pit pretty much. Dragapult comes in, which is great and all. Um, it does get the... Oh, it might be Clear Body to be fair. I think it is Clear Body or Heavy Duty Boost, one of the two. So what do we do here? I'm, I'm leaning towards sacking off Victory Bell because it's not doing much for us. So I think I'm going to do that. There is also the chance that we live the hit from the Dragapult. And then we can outspeed them and go for a Solar Beam the next turn. So we'll go into Scree real quick. Scree. Scree. They go for a Dragon Darts, which is definitely going to two-shot us. There we go. But we still got a Turn of the Sun, which means now we can freely go into good old Roaring Moon. Has the Sun wear off? No, I don't think the Sun wear off. So... We'll go into the good old Roaring Moon real quick, like so. And if the sun does wear off this turn, which I don't think it does, we get the Protosynthesis. There we go, in speed, right? Yeah, there we go. So we outspeed the Dragapult. Now we just go for a knockoff. We have to go for a knockoff here. They may Terra. If they Terra, if they Terra Fairy or something along those lines, then we're kind of screwed. But I think we're going to be all right. So they withdraw the Dragapult. What are they going to go into to take a knockoff? Probably Porygon 2 or the Magna Zone. Porygon 2 comes in. And that's definitely going to be able to take at least one uh, knockoff. But we will get rid of the Eviolite if they have Eviolite. So they get caught in the sticky webs, which is great and all. But they are going to get a download in attack, which is great. No special attack, just attack. So knockoff comes through. That does no damage. We knocked off their Eviolite though, which is great. As the harsh sunlight does finally fade. So that Dragapult has just become a massive threat to us. So I'm leaning towards going for another knockoff. I think that is the way to go. So, oh no, we might need the Terra Steel. I think, the I think the way to go is um, Iron Boulder, to be honest with you. I think Iron Boulder does really well here. Iron Boulder definitely does really well here. So I'm going to go into Nice Boulder. Now, Porygon 2 do tend to carry Foul Play sometimes. Um, I don't think he'll go for a Foul Play. I think he's more likely going for an Ice Beam or a Terra Blast here, um, to be honest with you. So let's see what they do. They go for a Trick Room. That Dragapult is now not a threat. But the Magna Zone definitely is. So now that the tables are turned... What do we go for? Let's go for a close combat. Screw it. I mean, if they switch into Dragapult here, then that's going to be unfortunate. But I don't think they will. Because we outspeed them. We outspeed the Dragapult. No, we don't. Because boost strategy. They withdraw the Porygon too. So what are they going to go into? Dragapult? Magnazone, the chosen one, comes in. That is not the best switch in. They weren't expecting the close combat at all. Definitely weren't expecting the close combat. That is a big Magnazone right there. That's a very big Magnazone. So we go for that close combat. That's going to do a lot of damage to the Magna Zone as it nearly KOs them, which is amazing. Now, this Magna Zone is a big threat to us, a very big threat to us. It could be analytic, so I need to be careful with what I do here. I'm fully expecting a Flash Cannon, but at the same time, they could go for a Thunderball and KOs with our minus defense. So what do I do here? If they are analytic, then they're going to go first. I say we go for an Earthquake, personally. They go for a Flash Cannon, though. This gives us a free switch into Magmortar, though. Which is going to be really useful for us. So, Iron Boulder does go down. But we could still do this. Under, like, Trick Room could help us win here. If we can get the Roaring Moon in before the Trick Room runs out, then we could be alright. So, Magmortar comes in. Looking amazing. And we'll just go straight for a Fire Blast. There's no reason not to. They go for a Vault Switch, which is definitely going to sting a little bit. Not too much. Um, they must be a different. They must not be choice specs, obviously, because they change a move. But they must not be like I don't know what they could be. To be honest with you, item wise, they could be magnet. I should have switched in the uh, Magmortar on the incoming flash cannon. To be honest with you, really should have done. But we go for a fire blast now, and that's going to do a two shot to the Dragapult. And the trick room's still up, so we outspeed. So let's go for another fire blast. If if Magmortar can take out the Dragapult here, we're actually in a very good position. We missed the Fire Blast, which is extremely unfortunate for Magmortar. 
as they go for a Dragon Darts, which is able to cleanly take us out. So we couldn't take advantage of the Trick Room right there, um, as now the Twisted Dimensions do return to normal, which is very unfortunate. So it all comes down to Roaring Moon right now. All comes down to Roaring Moon. Um, I'm going to have to Terra. I'm going to have to Terra Steel. That's what I'm going to have to do, Terra Steel. So I'm going to do it now. I'm going to Terra Steel Outrage. The Magna Zone has not taken any damage, right? No, it took damage. We can definitely KO it. So we go for Terra Steel Outrage. That's what we have to do to win this. So that's what I'm going to do. So there we go. Terra Steel like so. That Magmortar missing that Fire Blast was so crucial. If we could have taken that out with that, we would have had enough HP to take a, a, a hit from the Rillaboom probably. They do go for the Dragon Darts, which is great. That's not going to do much damage to my uh, Roaring Moon right now. As uh, we're able to go straight for an Outrage right now and take out this Dragapult. So there we go. We do lock ourselves in. They could have Terra Fairy on any of their Pokemon, really. Um, but I don't think they will. So in comes the Rillaboom. This thing is a threat, that's for sure. Um, it gets caught in the Sticky Web, so it's not as fast as it would like to be. Um, and this is what I mean. I could, I could have I could have taken this thing out. I could have taken... The, I, if Porygon, if, if Magmortar hit that Fire Blast, Magmortar could have finished off their entire team. Literally could have finished off their entire team, but it had to miss. They go for a fake out though, which is going to do no damage. Um, but it does knock us out of our outrage. Um, and also stops us from getting confused. So that's actually kind of benefited us a little bit. So let's go for another outrage. Outrage comes through. Should do a lot of damage to the Rillaboom. I'm not hoping on it. Yeah, I'm not banking on it KOing. As they go for a wood hammer, which will KO us, unfortunately. As uh, Roy Moon goes down. So yeah, miss on the Magmortar. Definitely would have, because the sticky webs are up. So... Magmortar would have outsped the Rillaboom. We could definitely take a Grassy Glide and potentially burn it. Would have outsped and KO'd the Porygon 2 from where it's at with no Violite. Would have definitely KO'd the Magnazone. Ah, well. Anyway, GG Ultimate OD. That was a pretty fun one. I enjoyed that one. It's just a shame about Magmortar. <laughs> and the second battle is here. We're going against Zeke, also known as Rage Trooper, from the Discord server in the Overused tier. They've got a pretty cool looking team, to say the least. Pretty sure it's not OU. I'm pretty sure it's under OU, but it's, it's whatever. We've got Magmortar and Araquanid and Victory Bell, so I'm not really forced. But it's a full Hisui team, which is really interesting. Let me know who you think is going to win based on the team you see on screen right now. And with that being said, let's jump straight into the game. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Zeke. So they lead off with Funtak, the uh, shiny Quillfish, which is really cool. Overquill, sorry. Really cool, shiny Pokemon right there. Um, I'm going to get the Sticky Webs up right away because I don't see a Hazard Clearer. And that Zoroark is a potential threat. This could be the Zoroark they've led with, after all. Um, so I'm going to go for a Sticky Web first and foremost and see what they're going to do. They go for a Spike. So we still have a Hazard Remover of our own. I suppose they could have Defog on the Braviary or Rapid Spin on the Lilig and Hisui. But getting the Sticky Webs will be still going to be useful. So I'm going to use them to my advantage. So they got the Spikes up, which is unfortunate. But now I can just go for a Liquidation. Get some serious damage off on the Overquill, which would be great. So they go for another layer of Spikes. I'm, again, I'm going to Rapid Spin them away with my Torkoal eventually. Um, provided the Zoroark doesn't come in, of course. So we go for a liquidation. That's going to do a lot of damage to the Overquill, I hope. It does over half, which is fantastic. Let's go for another one because they don't really have the best switch-ins to a liquidation. They may just go for an extra layer of spike here and have it as a suicide lead. They go Destiny Bond. How many times am I going to get Destiny Bonded? How many times? It's like a, it's my kryptonite. Everyone just Destiny Bonds me all the time. <laughs> I suppose I should have seen it coming, but I really thought they'd set up another layer of spikes. But no, they Destiny Bonded my Araquanid, which means down it goes. We could have used that Focus Sash Miracle stuff for later with the Gudra or the Braviary, for example. But nope, not going to happen, I'm afraid. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into Torkoal. And I'm going to attempt the Rapid Spin. So they go into Teddy Bear, which is going to be the Ursa Luna. Is it the Ursa Luna, though? That's the real question. We don't know if it's Ursa Luna. So we'll go into Torkoal right now. We do get hurt by two layers of spikes, but they get hurt in the Sticky Web. So that's not too bad. Um, they're already slow, if, the, if they are what I think they are. We get the Drought up, though, which is great. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go for a Rapid Spin. Hoping and praying that it is, in fact, the Earth Luna. I could be wrong, though. Um, I might go for... Yeah, I'm going to go for the Rapid Spin and hope and pray. They go for a Trailblaze, which tells me they are the Earth Luna, which is great. That's not going to do any damage. And we get a free Rapid Spin off on um, the Ursa Luna, which is great. So the Ursa Luna is going to be fast now, but not really because it still has the Sticky Webs. It basically just got rid of the Sticky Webs. Um, but they are Guts, which is very terrifying. Very terrifying for my team. So what do we do here? I got the Rapid Spin off. I'm, I'm not going to be able to switch anything in. So I'm going to have to go for a Stealth Rock real quick. 
So they go for a Drain Punch, which is interesting. That's not going to do much damage to us. And we are definitely able to take that like a champ. And then we're going to go for a Stealth Rocks and get them up. Because they're going to hurt the Hisuian Braviary and also break potential Sash on the Hisuian Zoroark. Um, which is always good to have. Um, so now they are burned. But. But. I'm going to go for a Fire Blast. Am I going to go for a Fire Blast? I don't have a switch into a Headlong Rush. So I'm going to have to just go for a Fire Blast here in the sun. They go for a Belly Drum. Now that teddy bear just got real threatening real quick. Hopefully we can hit this fire blast because it should finish him off from here in the sun. We do hit the fire blast. Is it going to finish it off? Yes, it does. So this Luna goes down. They obviously didn't expect a fire blast maybe. Or they expected a body press, which they would have definitely been able to take a body press. That's for sure. So reverse Luna out of the way. That's great and all. But now the sticky webs are up. But there's a stay, I think. But also the stealth rocks as well. So in comes Slimy the Hisuian Gudra. That's, that's pretty cool. I like the nickname, Slimy. And um, they get hurt in the sticky webs, and they also get some stealth rock chip, which is always nice. Breaking a potential sash, not that that thing would have a sash. Uh, we need to get damage off on this thing. I think Magmortar can win if we pull through here. So let's go for a body press first and foremost. So we go for a body press. We do our speed bank, so the sticky webs is going to do a lot of damage to the uh, Gudra, which is great. They go for a Draco. That's going to take out Torkoal, no doubt. Yes, it does. So that is bad, but at the same time... We are still in a good position because looking at their team, Magmortar in the sun is going to do a lot of damage to their team. So as long as we can hit our Fire Blast, we should be golden. So we're going to Boomstick. It's my Boomstick. Nice and shiny. Gotta love it. And we'll go for a Fire Blast because it should take out the Gudra from here and they can't really switch anything in. So they withdraw the Gudra. What are they going to switch into a Fire Blast in the sun and Choice Specs Magmortar? Burb. The Hisuian Braviary comes in. Is it going to be Heavy Duty Boots? I'm assuming so. It's not. That's good to know. Can we hit this Fire Blast? That's the great we can. Should take out the Suin Braviary. It does, which is fantastic. They do not have a switch into Magmortar right now. All they can do is sack something off so they have a free switch in with something else, like the Zoroark, for example. Um, but Zoroark doesn't outspeed us thanks to the Sticky Webs unless the Heavy Duty Boots. In comes the Tiny Dancer, which is going to be the Hisuian Lilligant, if it is that. It's nice and shiny as well. Gotta love it. They get caught in them Sticky Webs. Now, we'll be able to tell if it's Zoroark by the Stealth Rock damage. That looks like Zoroark to me because fighting resists rock, so it should do a bit more. So I'm still going to go for a Fire Blast here because we do outspeed unless they're Choice Scarf. But even if the Choice Scarf, Choice Scarf means they won't KO us. So there we go. Down goes the Hisuian Zoroark. Haha, <laughs> we knew it was that from the Stealth Rock damage. Gotcha. Zoroark goes down. And I don't think there is anything they can do for Magmortar right now unless the Hisuian... No, Hisuian Lilligant has Chlorophyll. Why don't they bring that in? Then again, they haven't got a Sun Team, so they probably have Hustle on it. So the real Lilligant comes in. Nice and shiny. Uh, they get caught in the sticky webs. But I think the sun wears off this turn, right? I think. No, it doesn't. We've still got one more turn of sun. So let's go for that fire blast real quick. There we go. We missed the fire. We missed the fire blast again. Again. As they go for a close combat. But unfortunately, they miss because they are hustle. So let's just pretend that turn never happened. And let's try again. So we go for a fire blast. We miss again. Oh my god, this is a joke. This is a joke. As they missed... Oh, no, they, I thought they missed then. But that hustle boosted uh, mag, for close combat. Definitely KOs Magmortar. We could get the burn here. We don't get the burn there, which is unfortunate. But at the same time, it's RNG. You can't wish for RNG. You can complain about RNG. You just can't wish for it. Um, <laughs> so anyway, the sunlight does wear off. So now we need to go into something that could take this thing on. I am leaning towards the Roaring Moon. I think Roaring Moon can take this on just nicely. We can just go straight for an Outrage here. Um, should definitely take out the Hisuian Lilligant, and it should definitely take out the Gudra. So let's go for the Outrage real quick, like so. They're going to Terrastalize. Please don't be Fairy or Steel. That is just unfortunate if you're Fairy or Steel. That is very unfortunate if you're Fairy or Steel. Steel. It's definitely Steel. So <laughs> that's um, a really good Terror right there. A really good Terror right there, because now Outrage should still KO because of the defense drop, right? Yep, it does. <laughs> A Roaring Moon Choice Bandit is cracked. I love Roaring Moon with Choice Bandit. It's so cool. But because they've terrored, Hisuian Gudra comes in now and gets KO'd. Um, so let's just let that happen real quick. So Slimy comes in. They can't terror with this thing. I love how even with the resisted hit, it's still KO'd from like practically full. So Hisuian Gudra comes in, gets some Stealth Rock and Sticky Web Chip. And then we go for a Outrage the next turn because we're locked in. We go for the Outrage. That's going to KO good old Gudra. With a critical hit, not that that mattered. Definitely didn't matter. And that's going to be the game, so GG Race Troop. But anyway, here is the team. Try it out if you want to use the code at the top right corner of the screen. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you did enjoy, of course, leave a like, subscribe, all the wonderful stuff. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.